Okay, can you see the recording up in the corner? I want to make sure. I can, it's blinking. All right, good, then I think we're ready to go. I think I can get rid of these too. Yeah, that'll make our recording a little cleaner. So. Oh, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, we have some things to share. Dana Lucanis is the one that is on with me from Texas. So welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get to hear our voices. And I didn't mute anybody. But so if you do have any noise, mute. It sounds pretty quiet right now. So, but uh, we just thought that we would cover this topic. We did actually do this at reunion last year. Uh, but there was some great response from it, and I've had a number of leaders that have been asking me and questioning about just balance this time of year. So we know we're heading into a very busy season. There is a new incentive trip uh, promotion going on, which always adds a little frenzy to your business. And it's, you know, it can be challenging with a business at home. I think one of our, our directors had posted she just feels like she's working all the time. So yeah. it is easy for that to happen when you have a business out of your home. It pretty much surrounds you 24-7. And I think I realized once I moved into leadership and was really managing a team that I needed structure, um, first of all, to feel accomplished and more productive because I'm sure many of you, you get to the end of the week and go, what the heck did I accomplish? What did I do all week? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't you? I mean, and there's some weeks oh, yeah. that you feel more productive and then there's some weeks that you feel like that was a complete waste of a week. Seriously. Yes. Yes. So we hope that we can share some strategies tonight and things that both of us have learned that really may, may help you if you're struggling with either feeling like you're working all the time or you're feeling unproductive at the end of each week. Um, and then I hope through some of these things that we'll share that will give you an opportunity to make some changes yourself. So I'm going to start. Dan. All right. I always hate when this happens because sometimes the PowerPoint doesn't go. Oh, all right. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Dana. So, okay, so um, you guys, a lot of you know that I used to be in the hotel business, and so I had structure. I had really good structure. So when I started doing Pink Zebra 100% of the time, I found that I was all over the place. And like Connie said, by the end of the week, I mean, my husband would come home and be like, well, what'd you do? And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know. I mean, I feel like I'm just going in circles. So um, it was real, I realized really early on that it was going to be very important for me to find some structure in my own day. Um, I actually invested in a trainer, um, a life coach, whatever you call them these days, but I invested in someone to actually walk through this with me. And, um, uh, but it's, it's something that I have found is so simple to do. And so that's why I told Connie, let's just share all of this with everybody because there's no sense in everybody having to go out and get a coach or something like this. <laughs> but it definitely can help your days run better and um, you can actually get into a better routine. Um, so the, this slide here uh, talking about a daily routine is um, the first thing that you want to do when you get up. I mean, when, when I wake up in the morning, I'm not like, yes, let's take on the day. I mean, that's not how I wake up. I wake up going, hey, <laughs> here we go, you know. So the first thing I have to do is get myself in the right mindset. Um, that's the most important thing for me to get my day going. And so I get my coffee and I have a little quiet time, whether it's um, journaling or reading or listening to maybe a, a motivational podcast, um, whatever it is for you. But I think it's just really important to have a little bit of quiet time to kind of get your day started and get your mind in the right place. Um, and then, of course, um, exercise. I feel like this slide is in the wrong spot. But anyway, um, so I do all of those things, and then I get moving. So once I have gotten my quiet time down, that's when I get moving, whether it's yoga, stretching. I used to do kickboxing. I don't so much do that anymore, but I still make sure that I get moving every morning, get the blood flowing, um, because when you – when your blood is flowing, you're feeling better, and you're able to just be more productive. I mean, I don't know about you, Connie. I know you like to exercise, so I, I know that's a, a fact. In fact, you exercise in the morning, don't you? I do. I do. Yeah. I'm a morning person, so I roll out of bed, and that's what I do. That I very first thing. If I give myself any time to think about it, it won't happen. So absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually have to do it in the morning as well. Um, but again, it just gets the blood flowing, and you start feeling good. Um, and, and so, you know, you can really kind of get your, get yourself off to a great start. Okay. So I want to mention one thing that you said, and I know, I don't think it's in any of our, of our content, but you mentioned a podcast. 
Yes. So what I just wanted to point out with that is that even as a leader, and I don't care if you've been leading for a month or you've been leading for five years, um, education can be your greatest ally um, and it helps you to just expand your horizons, get better ideas, feel, I think as a leader, sometimes you feel a little drained. Yes, absolutely. It, yeah, and it will put that back in place for you. So um, I really think that's something really great to start your day with is a podcast. And I started, honestly, Jessica got me going on podcasts in the morning because I walk a lot. Yeah. So I, I was always listening to music and now I've started to listen to podcasts instead. Mm -hmm. And it, it is kind of amazing that I can take that time in the morning to just fill my brain a little bit and just give myself some more, whether it's motivation or ideas. I mean, I think it's really great for all of you. So I agree a hundred percent. And because we are, I mean, we are our own motivators when you have your own business. Yeah. Um, it, it is up to us. And so, I mean, I, we can give you a whole list of really good motivational speakers if you're not familiar with any, because there are some fantastic ones out there. Yeah. And so it, it just gives you that boost that you need to get yeah, that's, on. that's really good, Dana. And I think just to mention that, I'm glad you said that, because if you guys in the comments, um, you know, whether you do it on the, on the post or whatever, to let us know if you need that kind of stuff, because there is some really, I mean, I've got a library of books that I still look at. Some of them I've had for 15 years. Yes, absolutely. And I still pull them out. So um, we're fortunate now that we've got such, so much audio technology available to us that wasn't as big of a deal before. Um, but I still love a great book and love to highlight and go back to things that I've, you know, that I've uh, marked for Me whatever too. reason. So Me too. Okay. I kind of alternate. Some days I will do the podcast and other days I like to just read. So yeah. really yeah. Depends okay. on, you know, what you like to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but the, one of the most important things that I have learned over this whole journey is that my day, if I start off my day, which a lot of us do, we roll over and before we even get out of bed, we pick up that phone and we start looking at social media. Um, I am guilty every now and then I'll fall back into that routine, but by golly, it, I know like it, it hits me square in the head because it's like, why did you do this? You know not to do this. So the biggest thing I say is do not pick up your phone before you get out of that bed and start scrolling through social media because it can totally do a number on you. I don't know how many people, maybe it's just me, but I can read something on Facebook and it can absolutely take me down this path in my head that I'm, I'm mad or <laughs> I'm, I get upset about something and it's like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? This is not how I want to start my day. So I definitely have learned that I do not look at the social media first thing in the morning. In fact, I do not do it. And now I will say, I will glance at my phone to make sure I don't have any text messages. Or if I have a message on Messenger, you know, I will glance just to make sure that it's not anything like urgent, urgent. But nine times out of 10, it is not. I put my phone back down and I get back to my morning routine until my mind is in the right place to where I can actually attack social media head on with the right frame of mind. Good. I think, I think like a key there too is the intentionality because if you are working this business, of course, from your home as you all are, and you do not, and I'm not saying you have to have office hours, but to have some idea what you are willing to invest in it in terms of time. So whether you want to put a couple hours in a day, whether you want to do four or five hours a day, and if you waste one of those hours, which can happen so quickly by going through Facebook, then you really have lost almost 25% of your productive time on something that isn't moving your business forward at all. Unless you're really, you know, running a Facebook party or doing something like that. That's a completely different thing. Right. But right. Anyway, so go ahead. Right. But still, like, I mean, the picture is speaks volumes. Facebook <laughs> can be a black hole and you just don't even want to go there. And even with emails, I mean, I've learned, I just don't even look at any of it until I am ready to be very intentional about it because I don't want to get lost in it. I want to go in, I want to get it done what I need to get done. That's not, the morning is not the time for me anyway, to scroll that is not the time. The only time I scroll is if I'm waiting in a doctor's office and I have to be quiet anyway, so I can't do anything or, you know, it's just that time of day where I, I can actually sit there and scroll. So I just try to get in, be intentional and get out. Good, good, good. Setting a timer is not a bad idea either. You know, if no, you want to do it, it's 20 minutes or 25 minutes, whatever it is, right. set a timer and you have to commit to yourself 
that when that timer goes off, you stop no matter what. And I'm going to also say, so I know so many people that um, as soon as something's posted in a group, they're immediately responding to it. And it's probably because they have notifications turned on. Right. I have all my notifications off. I have to, like I said, be intentional and go in and look to see what's happening. Now, I may miss some stuff because it scrolls by quickly, but I'm sure somebody's going to fill me in later. So it's okay. You, you know, know what I mean? I'll always come back around to you. No question. <laughs> exactly. It'll be there eventually. <laughs> all right. Can we advance? Okay. Okay, so this is what I have put into place. I've been doing it now for a couple of years, and it has been such an asset for me with my business. It's fun, and it keeps me on track. So I do theme days. Um, for example, Monday is Motivational Monday. So that can, be, that can mean anything. It can mean that I'm going to do research on things that I can do throughout the week that bring motivation to the team or motivation to me. Um, it can be that I'm going to, that's the day I'm going to plan out, you know, what I'm going to do on my team live stream or my team call on the next night. Um, anything to do with motivation. And I actually block off a period of time on my calendar for that day to focus on those things. What I love about this is if it's Thursday and I'm working on my marketing information and all of a sudden I'm like, somebody just told me about a great motivational speaker. I got to check him out. Instead of having that squirrel moment and getting off of what I'm doing, I go to Monday, make a note, check out Brendan Burchard, and I get right back to what I'm doing. Because what you don't want to have happen is when you lose track of what you're doing, focus on something else, it takes you twice as long to get back to what you were doing. I hear it crackling. Yeah, yeah you know, I just, I see Rhonda Lane's name popping up when that's happening. So she might be on a cell phone. So if it is Rhonda, just mute yourself and it'll help because I can see her name popping up talking. So, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um, anyway, so it's, yeah, it's still Jenny. It's her again, Rhonda Lane. Oh, there she goes. She muted okay. it. It's like, okay, good. Um, so anyway, that's the whole point for me to have theme days is um, not only does it keep me focused and it's kind of fun for me because it's my theme and I've got stickers and all kinds of stuff because I still use an old fashioned calendar, but, um, but it also keeps me on track. So if I've got stuff that needs to be taken care of just when I'm sitting at my desk, like my follow up. Um, you know, contacting customers, anything like that. I try to do those on Wednesdays and I have a block of time on my calendar on Wednesday that I'll sit down and work on that. So if something pops up on Friday, oh, don't forget to follow up with so-and-so, I go write it down on Wednesday for next week and it's done. Like I don't have to worry about it again till Wednesday. So, um, so that's what I, I like to do are the, are the theme days. Okay. So, and I, I did the same thing. I mean, it was something I learned from, I don't know whom, um, at one point in my career as a leader, and it doesn't mean that you don't do anything else, but motivational oh, stuff on Monday. No, no, no. That's, yeah. It's, it's not, I mean, it truly does just allow you to have a focus for that day. That's basically what exactly. that's all about. So absolutely. Yeah. Parties, every, all of that still take precedence. They still, it's still my priority. It's just that I know those are the days of the week that I'm going to focus at least an hour on those certain things, if not more. So, right. um, so yeah. And, and on the calendar, and I don't think this is in our slides, but with the calendar, I, I have also learned that it is so important to block off everything that you possibly can so that you do know exactly, you know, the direction that your day is going to go. So, you know, I start with, like I have everything blocked until 9 a.m., which is when I technically start working because I've sure. done all my other stuff to get ready for the day. And then 9 a.m. is when I'll start with whether it's a one-on-one -on -one coaching call or whatever it is. And I literally time block everything so that I get everything done in the day that I want to get done. So I don't leave it to chance. I don't go, oh, okay, well, Wednesday, I'll just do some follow-up. Mm -hmm. I literally have Wednesday follow-up, one to three o'clock, and then I've got my notes next to it of what I want to follow up with. So again, it's being very intentional with your time and with your day. Good. Awesome. Okay. So I'm just going to say, I mean, I can be quick with this, that I start my day very similar to Dana in the sense that I am an exerciser. So that just gets my blood going. I'm not a coffee drinker. So it's what gets me moving. Um, so, and again, routine, I think is what creates consistency. That's what's the key to this whole thing, whether you're trying to lose weight or run a business, it really doesn't matter. 
Um, it just really is. And I do, when I get done exercising, get my day started, I shower, I act like I'm going to work. Um, and I did that all through my working career because I didn't want to be making phone calls in my pajamas. As luxury as that can be, I felt more like a business person when I was ready for the day. So um, it's just kind of how I get things moving. So I do feel like I learned a few things along the way in the field that really helped me to stay in the game. I mean, I spent 21 years in the field doing what you guys do, and I don't think I would have ever survived it if I would not have come up with some strategies to really help me keep my sanity and certainly keep my balance in life. Um, so the first thing is I just really made a decision and understood that I was no longer a stay-at-home mom. So when I left my corporate job and then joined direct sales a year later, um, then spent the next 21 years doing that as my career, I really started to shift my thought process of being a businesswoman that had the luxury of working from home. And how that changed for me is that, you know, I volunteered for just about anything and everything. And I realized that those, those volunteer hours, as important as they are to organizations and your kids and all of that, can sometimes take away from what you want to accomplish with your business. And if you're clear about that, then you start making better choices. So, you know, you don't have to be volunteer of the year. You can say no when people ask you for certain things and yet still stay involved in some way so you feel like you're basically playing your part. So that really, um, that slight shift really changed a lot of things for me, I said, I mentioned, and I volunteered when it made sense. So if it directly impacted my kids or something that I was very passionate about, yes, but all the other stuff I could say no to when it really infringed on me working to accomplish the goals that I was really trying to accomplish to benefit my family. And that was the bottom line of the whole thing. And I started to value my time more than I did before that. So for you, I think it's kind of the same thing. It's like all of us, you know, have different things outside of this business that, that takes our time. But when you're clear about what you're trying to accomplish and you know you, you need to focus certain times of your day or certain activities on your business, then you need to do that. So I started then also using Sunday nights to plan out my week. Um, I was not very good about setting strict office hours because things did change. And when my kids had certain sports going on, I wanted to be able to get to volleyball games at four in the afternoon. So, you know, it just kind of shifted with, with the seasons. But so I would, on Sunday night, set my hours for the week. So looking at the calendar, seeing what kind of things were going on with our family. And then I would try to communicate, of course, my party schedule to my, to my family, my husband, so that everybody knew what nights I was going to be tied up. Um, and then I, I think I was pretty good about keeping goals in front of them just to let them know what was coming up. So if I was going for a trip incentive or something like that, they were very aware of that um, so that they could support and they could understand when there are certain times of the year that I was busier than others. And so, you know, I needed to get their support in order to make this business work. And so the other thing, theme days, I had the same strategy as Dana. Uh, mine were slightly different than that. Um, not all not everything that we did each day of having a specific theme. I just tried to create intention and focus on specific those business building activities. So it was team day, as you mentioned, Dana, um, where that's where I tried to schedule most of my coaching calls. So I'm going to talk a little bit about coaching calls in a minute, because I think that's a big, uh, can be a big time drain um, and something that you feel constantly behind the eight ball with and a strategy that I helped or that I um, came up with helped me to feel a little bit more in control of that. So, and then my host coaching days, of course, and my prospecting days, I had definite days where I focused 100% on business prospects and on hosting prospects. So I would review my calendar three weeks out. That's always been my routine. Look to see what's happening through the road and what do I need to focus on uh, during those prospecting days to get my goals basically met. So that was plain and simple. So uh, being balanced is kind of an intangible and you really have to think about what it means to you. And I think that word of being balanced is a little bit... Um, <laughs> maybe a misnomer. Um, in this kind of business, I learned to get a little comfortable with chaos and knowing that there were always things that were not going to be done. Um, but what does it really mean to you to make help you feel what keeping balance really means for you? So some of mine were the stressors on party nights, and I wasn't good about getting myself prepared and ready. And then, um, you know, my husband would come home from work and I was trying to get dinner on the table and out the door in 30 minutes and I was a crazy person. It was like I was running around like my hair was on fire. 
I started to realize that if I just got everything ready, my car fully packed, all my catalogs ready, the stuff done in the morning, the minute my kids went off to school, mm -hmm. that stress time at the end of the day wasn't there. So there are some things that you can probably look at that are those stressors for you that you might be able to do, put some processes in place to help you with that. Um, your non-negotiables. So what are your non-negotiables? And those for me was the mornings before when my kids went, to, before they went to school, right after school. So I knew what time, of course, that bus or that I had to go pick them up from school was. So I certainly could schedule around that easy enough. I really just tried to look at dinner time. Um, I was famous for jumping up from the dinner table and answering the phone because who knows, it could be a, you know, a prospect that called. But I started to realize voicemail is there for a reason and I could start to control my time by just being more sensitive to that. And then bedtime for sure. When my kids were getting ready for bed and I was you know, reading stories, whatever it was we did as a family, I really started to protect those non-negotiable times because then it started to make me feel more in control and it started to make them feel more comfortable with this business that certainly permeates much of your life. So, and then the other thing is, can you say no when what you're being asked to do does not serve your values or goals? So that comes back to what I talked about earlier. When you start to really value that time and the goals that you've set for yourself, you can ask yourself that question and comfortably say, no, I'm not able to do that because I have to work whatever is going on. Be okay with that. Um, let's see. I think that I pretty much stopped volunteering for literally everything under the sun. Um, if it didn't fit in with my work schedule and goals, and I just learned to say no graciously, of course. And I think as I did that, others started to respect my time as well. So, um, but I realized I also needed strategy. So I learned to create systems and some processes really to save time and improve those efficiencies, especially for things that were repetitive. As I mentioned earlier, my party day schedule. So even for my meeting, I would start to plan for that instead of like that day before my meeting. And I did hold a, a uh, live meeting every month, um, but, that day before I was usually scrambling, sometimes the day of, trying to put together some content for a meeting and it made me feel crazy. So I just started using, and I think I'm gonna share um, in a little a slide later, I started using the meeting planner and all month I was working on meeting content. So when an idea came up, when someone shared a success story, I would fill that form out. So by the time I got to the time close to the meeting, I had a bunch of stuff already written in on my sheet and it made it so much less stressful and easier for me to pull together a good training. New consultant onboarding is a huge one. Now we've got the academy available to you guys now, which I hope you're using that as a foundation for your new consultants. And then you can really hone in on their why and their purpose and how they're gonna feel if they achieve all of those things that you can do more as you build the relationship with those new consultants. Let us take care of some of the basic stuff through the academy um, and certainly give me ideas if you need more content because that's gonna be a really great thing. So, but your, your onboarding strategy has to include, of course, the academy, but what else do you do as a leader to bring those people through that first six to eight weeks when they're a consultant and that time is so important. The coaching strategy really comes back to what I mentioned earlier about using coaching and training time effectively. So initially, you know, you've heard me talk about the ABCs before, you know, A's being those people that are really your go-getters or consistently partying, producing sales, you know, sponsoring, whatever it is. So those people you're going to talk to more consistently. The others are kind of your mainstayers, the B's. So they're putting in sales every month, but they're not, you know, blazing any new trails by any means. And then you've got C's that are people that just come on board. They love the discount. They might do a party every once in a while. Those people you probably won't ever coach, um, but they're connected to your team page and maybe they get their, your newsletter, all of that type of thing. So what I will tell you from a coaching standpoint is that if you are working, let's say 20 hours a week, I mean, everybody's time is gonna be different, but whatever it is, we'll just use that as a starting number. Instead of me thinking about all these people I had to coach that I really wanted to work with and try to fit them into that time that I had, I started working from the opposite end. And that really was setting aside how many hours a week am I willing to give to coaching? So whether it's two hours or four hours or five hours, whatever, 
then I started to think about strategies that I could use to try to get as many people in those hours that I set aside specifically for coaching as possible. So whether it's one-on-ones, whether I limit it to 15 minutes at a time, whether I'm doing, you know, partners together, or I might be coaching a group of four people at once. I mean, I started to get smarter about how I could take that group of people and then figure out in my four hours or whatever it is the time that I'm willing to give this, how can I maximize that time and get as many people through that cycle as possible? Every, you know, doing coaching every other week instead of every week. I mean, there's lots of different ideas. So if you need some ideas around that, please let me know and I'll be happy to share. Okay, Dana, it's back to you. Okay, um, I did want to answer. So Dana Peterson asked if we if we have office hours because time management is her biggest problem. Um, and kind of back to what Connie was saying, you know, you determine how many days or how many hours in a day that you're going to work. And that that's the time frame that you make sure you make the most of those hours. So if you've got, you know, you had a party and you've got follow up to do and all of this, that's, that's a big priority. Or if you're working with your team, those are priorities. So you make sure that you, you know, fit those in, in those time slots. So it's, it's really based on the hours that you want to give to the business. Um, I personally don't have office hours, but I learned also early on, that I, uh, I teach my team how to depend on me or when to depend on me by my actions. So in the beginning, when someone would text me at 11 o'clock at night, even though I was half asleep, I would roll over, I would pick up my phone, I would give them the answer, and I would put it back down. Well, I taught them they don't have to go look for the answer because they will just give it to them at 11 o'clock at night or whatever time it is. So I learned that that was, that was just, I mean, that's exhausting. Nobody wants to do that. And we're not teaching anybody, you know, where to go find the answers because there's so many resources. Um, so I, I just stopped. I mean, I got to the point where it was like nine o'clock. I stopped answering my phone. That was me. Some people are night owls. You can keep on going later and that's great, <laughs> but I can't do that. I get up too early in the morning. So I just stopped and it's really funny now because they joke and make fun of me that I go to bed too early, which I don't really go to bed that early, but I'm okay if that's what they think because I'm not getting text messages or, or messages, you know, at 11 and 12 o'clock at night anymore. So they will do whatever you train them to do. You know? Absolutely. The funny thing about that is, is that I used to say that if you want people not to want your job, then keep making yourself available 24 so seven. And true. part of what, you know, you as a leader want people to do is to aspire to that role of leadership. And if you make it look so incredibly difficult where, oh my gosh, Dana is so awesome, but she is on all the time. People yeah. don't want that for their lifestyle. So you kind of have to show them and Nothing in most cases, unless it's, you know, month end, you know, nothing really has to be responded to that moment that somebody might send you a question. And many times if I would wait till the next day, like you said, Dana, to call them back or text them or whatever, they'd find the answer out hey, themselves. So. so many times in the morning, I will message back if I do still happen to get a message and I'll message back and say, sorry, I missed you last night. Did you find what you were looking for? And the answer is nine times out of 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like, hey, yeah. So yeah, just don't, you know, just you are in control of, of your schedule. So yeah, absolutely. keep that control. Don't give it up. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're giving you permission to right. control your time. So right. exactly, exactly. Okay. Um, so the next one really, we, we talked a little bit about um, team meetings and team meetings. I feel like they're, they're so important because um, you really create that sense of community when you bring everybody together. Um, I know that um, it doesn't matter how big the meeting is. If it's, you know, four people show up or 24 people show up, the fact of the matter is that you're all coming together um, and you're, um, you're creating that sense of, of community and, and people bond. These pictures, it's really funny to me because most of the people in these pictures are still consultants. Some of them just do it you know, as a hobby or whatnot, but they're still with us all these years later because of that sense of community mm -hmm. in, and they don't want to let that go. So, I mean, I love that part. Um, what was the other thing I was going to, I was going somewhere else with that. Um, I can't remember, Connie. <laughs> I can't <laughs> remember. It was really you you talked about testimonies and I don't know if you want to say anything about that or not. Um, 
Because you don't always have to be the one speaking is what you oh, were. thank you. That's what it was. Yet. That's exactly what it was. Yes. Okay. okay. So early on when I did these meetings, I did everything. Mm -hmm. I had food. I wanted it to be a, a grand occasion for everybody coming to my home. And I wanted to make a big deal out of it. I have giveaways. I did everything. And it really wore me out it, to the point where when the next meeting was coming up, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm already dreading it and hadn't even started yet. So Connie actually was the one that told me early on, don't do all that. You need to assign, like let everybody take a task and get everybody involved. And what I learned from that is they all feel a sense of commitment at that point. I'll have other people that will work on the agenda with me, or I'll ask, you know, if you feel like making a dish, bring it along. I mean, they don't have to, but if they want to, they can. And it's really interesting because everybody wants to contribute in some way. And if you make them feel like they're contributing, it just makes for such a better meeting. And it's not all on you. And that, that was huge for me. So thanks, Connie. That was like right after you got here. And I was like, here's the problem I'm having. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. So that's again where that team meeting planner can help you because it literally has those jobs, you know, whether it's greeters at the door, or somebody bringing a drink or somebody bringing a dessert or, you know, sharing a particular topic or doing a testimonial. All of that stuff is there. So I would even at the end of my meeting, let's say if I had my August meeting and I'm now planning for September, I would fill that out with some people right at the meeting in August say, yes. you know, in September, are you willing to be our greeter? I'd always love to have someone at the door. You know, are you willing to bring a snack? Are you willing to share a testimony? You just gave us this great story about something that happened. So you can kind of even plan it in your, as your one month meeting comes to a close and the next one's gonna launch. So yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's amazing to me that all I, now I just have that piece of paper and people just start grabbing it and writing. I mean, it's great. I love it. Good. So everybody, Good. everybody takes ownership. And then the last thing I'm going to say about the team meetings is um, another stressor that I always had early on was I felt like I needed to be very creative, come up with something new that they'd never trained on before <laughs> and recreate the wheel every single time. And you don't have to do that. Um, you can take these topics. You could take topics that are in the, the Pink Zebra Academy. You can, there's so many topics. And if you just touch on those things, you don't have to recreate the wheel because we all need to hear the same information over and over and over again. Absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome. Good, good. Okay. So this is what we were talking about right here. So oh, there we go. This is it. This is it. So it's just, a, you know, it's just a meeting planner. It doesn't mean you have to do it this way by any means, but there's, go ahead, Dana. Sorry. I no, it's not me. I... Sounds like Lori was asking a question or something. So the opening remarks, you know, how you're welcoming people, whatever you're doing there, obviously recognition is always part of it. So there's just some ideas there, incentives and promotions. If there happen to be things going on, you're covering the current stuff that's happening, any product reviews, because people love the product. You know, it's like you have to talk about your product at every meeting because people fall in love. That's why they so many of them come to rally. It's, it's they love seeing the products. So whatever your training topic is going to be, it's got some suggestions there, but certainly there's plenty of other things. And then your testimonial, I always think it's a great thing to just have someone showcase there and then you're closing. And then all the things we were talking about with the meeting setup, all that stuff is listed there on the back. So it really helps you to just kind of plan out. And if you're doing um, uh, live on Facebook or something trainings, you can do this same thing. This, this meeting format can help you whether you're doing those meetings in your home like Dana did, does, or if you're actually doing something, because I know a lot of you do some weekly trainings and stuff, you can use some of this for even that. So, Absolutely. All right. Good stuff. Okay. All right. So I think I am next here to talk about team. And I, is this mine or yours? It's yours. Okay. That's what I thought. Could you go on to the tree report from here, yeah. I think. So. Yeah. Okay, so when we talk about this, I really think that um, it's always important as a leader to be working on a plan to get to the next level. So if you're a manager at this point, you know, getting to senior manager, senior to executive, all of that. And it doesn't mean that it's going to happen overnight. You know, I know it can, it can take years for some of these promotions to happen, but really sitting at a rank for extended periods of time, unless you're comfortable there, and that's okay, um, just creates, it'll, you'll find it creates stagnation, I think, in your team and in yourself as well. 
So people in teams really like to be part of something that's going somewhere. So even if it's not advancing a rank, it might be growing your, your uh, group volume or growing the number of team members that you have. Just think about where can we create some growth opportunities because it gets people excited. So how do you go about, if you are actually looking at, you know, promoting to the next rank, how do you go about sharing that, that you want to promote to a higher rank without really sounding self-serving? And I have leaders ask me about that all the time. So just like anything else in this business, it's all about the words that you use. So if I was going to, if I was at, you know, senior manager at this point and I was going for executive manager, how can I really get my team on board? One thing I will tell you is you remove that I completely. So this is about a team goal. It's about moving our team to an executive manager team. It always, all your language is really team focused and not I focused, of course, because you can't promote these ranks without other people doing something. This is not an, you know, a uh, singular personal goal. It becomes a team effort. So Everything that, that is spoken in, you know, we're working towards becoming. So it's all about we, it's all about team, and then share what it's going to take and ask for those that might be interested in just being on this forward moving train that you've got going on. And you'll start to, I think, if you just shift your language slightly and really come across as a team effort, I think it really changes basically how people want to get involved and feel that they're part of this whole forward thing moving. And then when you're doing that, they're learning that. So as they start to think about advancing rank, they're gonna be doing the same thing with their teams as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so for you, you are next. Um, yeah, so this is, this is so important. A champion in the making has to take care of their business first. So basically, you are leading by example when you do that. Um, so it's so important that our teams see us working our business um, as well. Because number one, they're going to learn from us. They're going to see us doing it. They're going to see that we are doing it simply, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to make it look really easy. And then they're going to follow suit. It happens every time. But there are so many times over the last almost eight years that I have seen leaders not, not really doing much of anything and then getting upset when they can't figure out why their team isn't doing much of anything. And it's kind of like, well, <laughs> you know, you kind of got to set the example for them sometimes. You got to show them how to do it and you absolutely have to be doing it yourself. So um, one of the biggest things for me is to make sure that I am setting my goals ahead of time so that I get as much done in the first two weeks of the month as I possibly can. I want to have my goal for the month almost complete by the 15th of the month. Um, that leaves me the rest of the room for growing into my next month, for helping my team members, and all of that sort of thing. So, um, so it's just so imperative that we're leading by example, and that we're having parties, and that we're, whatever way we are working the business, that we're sharing that with our team so that they can see, um, you know, what we're doing and, and be inspired, hopefully, to do it themselves. Absolutely. And, you know, we have this saying, and I'm sure you guys have heard it many times, so goes the leader, so goes the pack. So I think the other thing about it is when you are consistently doing parties or events, whatever it is you happen to be, it is a great training ground for your team. So those things that you're doing, you know, kind of the general rule as a leader is never work alone. I mean, when you're going out and doing parties or maybe when you're making host coaching calls or prospecting calls, get someone from your team on with you or going with you so that you've got an opportunity to provide some training alongside you doing your personal business. So that basically kills two birds with one stone very easily. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. So you're going to talk about the tree view quickly. So just really quickly, for anybody who might not know this, this is, um, this is the best report, in my opinion, to see exactly where your team is at, um, to set goals to what you want to strive to do, to see where, um, you know, people, I had, I will never forget this, one of my very first team meetings, um, there was a girl that was here, and she was, she just, she said, I just, nothing happens for me, this business is just not working for me, and I said, well, you know, tell me what you got, and so anyway, we basically looked at her tree view, and she realized she was one person getting in active 
away from promotion. She didn't even realize it. So something that simple and talk about igniting. And that was several years ago and she's still a consultant. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping an eye on what's happening with your team so that you can encourage them and say, you know, Hey, you're only this far away and way to go. And Oh my gosh, you just hit that or you hit this. And, um, and the tree view report is one of my favorites to do that with because you can really kind of see everything at a glance. So, right. And it's a great way for you also to reach down into your organization. One of the, I listened to Justin Prince's training this past week, number three, the week three, whatever. Um, and he talked about dipping down into the organization and working from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you were going for a rank promotion or you were going for a you know volume growth or you're trying to hit a certain volume, rather than starting on your level ones and talking to them, he talks about dipping down in the organization, which I did all the time. I mean mm -hmm. all the time. And when you got someone below excited and maybe they're gonna book a couple parties this month or maybe they sponsored somebody or are going to sponsor someone. As you work your way up the line, you can say, "Oh, I just talked to your, you know, one of your consultants, Christy, and she is on fire. She's got two parties that she's going to get scheduled over the next couple of days, and so it just kind of can work your way up the up the tree to get the whole team kind of, you know, involved. So don't be afraid to reach down for sure. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing I have to say on this report, I, I get excited when I look because this was old, and all those little reds in the middle are gone because I'm never going to get out." <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's so funny. So now we can really see what's going on. Good. Awesome. Okay. So I am actually very passionate about this topic of creating a company where everyone feels supported. So every bit of success that each one of you has really helps every single person in our company. So whether you're on the same team or not, and I know tonight we're talking about your team and what you do as a leader for sure. But we also have a lot of really amazing people in this company that want to help and support. And so, and I feel like if I give it out, it, the payback comes to me as well. So um, I just, you know, encourage you if you've got people in your area and you are doing, you know, meetings to be okay with others coming. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you have to do coaching calls with, with people there. That, that's not what I'm suggesting at all. But we just want to certainly have build a company where everyone's success matters because it really does uh, does make a difference. And when you think about, you know, how much we adore Tom and Kelly at their quality people with integrity who want nothing more than to see all of you succeed. And so, you know, if someone comes up to me at reunion or anywhere and asks when I was doing with when I was in the field and asked a question, I wanted to know how I did this or did that. I would never say, you know, whose team are you on? It right. Matter, you know, it just didn't matter at all. So I recognize that you all have to take care of your own first. That's certainly a priority, but we can also be part of a changing environment where everyone shares and celebrates together. And I certainly love to see that happening. So, um, so I think that really kind of brings us to a close other than a little challenge at the end, Dana, unless there's anything else that you want to add. No, I, I think that's great. And I do love the, that everybody does work across lines mm -hmm. I feel like um I mean if pink zebra succeeds we all succeed so absolutely I love that. Mm -hmm. and I I think that's really key when we're coming into a, a season where we've got a rally less than a month away. Um, you know, as you are participating, whether you're a rally leader, you're a helper, or you're just attending, um, to really make everyone feel welcome. Um, just everyone needs, especially rally leaders in particular, that we don't want them to be team focused at all. Um, but really at the rallies to just show what kind of company we've created here and how, you know, everybody's success makes a difference and we want everyone to feel welcome. Right. So, okay. Now, so our little challenge is just to take a moment, if you can, after this is over and write down three things from this training that you think you can implement in the next two weeks. And everybody's idea of what you, what maybe spoke to you tonight is going to work, is going to be focused on where you feel your stressors are, where you feel like you're out of balance and all of that. Um, so think about that. Think about some of those things that are making you feel a little bit off kilter and decide if you're going to create some processes or strategies or use some of the tips that we've shared to really help you through that. Because, you know, I, I think the biggest thing here in this business is don't quit. Don't give up because you feel like 
It's just you're struggling with that balance thing because there's probably someone that can help you through it if you're willing to raise your hand and see, I need to work through this. So um, the other thing is I would highly recommend you connect with a business buddy, whether you have one right now and you haven't communicated in a while, or maybe you are someone that does that pretty regularly, but it doesn't have to be somebody in your team. And in fact, in most cases, it's better if it's not. So um, I, I just think sometimes you need that person that you can kind of connect with and you can kind of talk about some things and some strategies and share some ideas, maybe what they're doing with your team and what you're doing with your team. Um, but I think we all need a little bit of an outlet. So, you know, yeah, I agree. yeah. So Dana, yeah, you know, you, we even do that sometimes. I mean, you yes. just, you know, and if, if you're a leader, the, the rule is never dump down, you always go up. So if you're someone like Dana who doesn't have a person above and, and truly in that sense, that's what I'm here for. So, you know, it's like I can let you have a pity party for a little while, and then you got to be over it, and you got to move on and figure that's out how you're gonna, you know, how you're gonna fix whatever the issue is that's struggling or that's frustrating you. So, we hope this was helpful to you guys tonight. I'm excited about what's going on over this next month. We have so many new things happening and rally coming right around the corner, and there's some really incredible things that are going to be announced there. We've got two two product categories that are going to be announced at rally. One is now, and one is down the road a bit. But I think you guys are going to be very excited about that. And I, I would love for you to be there in person as many people on your team as possible to come in here and see what's happening. So anything else, Dana, before we say goodnight? No, ma'am, just thank you for having me. No, oh, absolutely, it's a pleasure. Thanks for sharing your expertise and experience with everybody. And we're gonna say goodnight and thank you all for being a part of our training tonight. Uh, and join us for the All Consultant Training tomorrow evening or get your team members on there, okay? Bye. All right, take care, bye. <laughs>